All right, so today we're going to be talking about a new module from Ortis called CVSSO. Uh, this is a module that is already available and published on ForgeBox, um, and, and it's built to help you integrate um, with different identity providers using OAuth or uh, SAML so that you can have like a one-click login flow, um, say with Google or Facebook or something like that. Um, like I said, this is already available uh, right now for you to install and use in a cold box application. So we'll just kind of take a look at some of the features and um, uh, a little demo of it uh, actually working. So like I said earlier, CBSSO is all about integrating with identity providers. Um, if you've ever tried to do that before, you have probably experienced the pain of uh, reading through their documentation and figuring out how to um, manage all of the different redirects that you have to uh, when using OAuth 2.0 or SAML or anything like that, it's um, painful. Thankfully, you now have this module if you're using a cold box application to help do most of that for you. And all you have to do is implement the application specific stuff and um, configure the, the right values for the service that you're using, like your client ID and client secret. So some of the features that CBSSO is going to provide for you is um, that we, out of the box, we support multiple different providers. Um, I'll look at the list of those now. So we've got a built-in provider for Facebook, for GitHub, for Google, and for uh, Microsoft uh, Enterprise Service using SAML. Um, and you can just turn any of those on, put in your values, and you're good to go. We also uh, support creating a custom provider. So if for some reason one of our providers doesn't work for you or you have a third-party system that uh, you want to integrate with, you can always just uh, write your own and it will integrate seamlessly with this module. Uh, we also provide integration with CB Security and CB Auth um, so that um, instead of having to do the boilerplate of writing out um, all of the glue between those different libraries together, uh, we've provided a template where you can just go and fill in the pieces that you need to and and then we'll automatically log you in and create your users and keep everything in sync. Uh, and we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. Um, and then the final feature that we have for you is that we've provided several interception points. So if there's something about our workflow where you need to be able to access different pieces of information or um, handle something yourself, uh, you can just look into those interception points and um, do the work you need to. Uh, that way, our framework isn't restricting you. It's just supporting you and giving you the tools that you need to make it work. Okay, so before we get to the actual application, let's take a look at um, how it's implemented in the app. So here I've got a test harness set up that we're going to look at. Um, and the very first thing I'm going to do is show you the cold box configuration. So this is um, <clears throat> the very first step um, would, of course, be to install the module, which is as simple as uh, uh, box install CBSSO. Um, so you do that, and the command box is going to handle all the heavy lifting for you and get that installed. Well, once that's done, you'll need to configure it in your cold box application. So here um, in my test harness, uh, you can see that I've already configured a couple of different modules. One is CB auth and CB security. I won't go into detail about how to configure those. You can look over their documentation, but here's an example of it. Um, and then here I've done some basic configuration for CBSSO. You can see that I've enabled CB auth integration uh, because I want to leverage the power of those libraries as well. And then I have um, five separate identity providers configured here. We've got a custom provider uh, set up so that we can integrate with you know a, a fake third party. Um, and then we are using some of the already uh, created providers like Google provider, GitHub, Facebook, Microsoft, SAML, like we talked about. Um, so you'll notice that a couple of these, like the custom provider doesn't have any special configuration, but a few of these have some very specific, like client ID, client secret. Um, and then this one has auth endpoint, expected issuer, federation metadata URL. All of this is covered in the documentation, but the important thing for you to know is that these values are going to be whatever you pre-configure with your identity provider. So if you, um, in our case today, we're going to be looking at Microsoft SAML. So before this demo, I already went out to Microsoft's website and I created a, um, a pretend um, application, enabled single sign-on for it, and got the client ID, client secret um, uh, values, and it configured them in an EMB file. 
where I'm pulling those in um, and populating my provider with those. Um, you can use ENV files for that if you want to. You could read them from a file or read them from the database. All of that is really up to you. Um, you just have to make sure that you get them to the provider so that they know what to do. All right, so now that our modules are configured, the next thing we need to do is go over and look at our user service that we have configured for CB security. Um, when configuring your user service um, for CB security, there's a couple of functions that you need to implement uh, per that module. Things like is valid credentials, retrieve user by username, retrieve user by ID, so on and so forth. Uh, when you include CBSSO, uh, you need to add a few additional functions to that. Um, so those functions that we want to include are going to be find by SSO. Um, this function, you get an SSO authorization response, which is basically just a, uh, a green light from our identity provider that the user who's trying to log in has approved your application for use. Um, and from that value, from that response, you're going to have a couple of different values that you can use to match it up with a user in your system. So in this case, I'm not using a database. I'm just using an array in memory to keep track of who my users are. But you can imagine how you might connect this to a database. So if, if um, we get an, uh, an email back from our identity provider, we take that username, and we're going to search through our store of users to find out if any of them match up with that username. If none of them match, then we're just going to return, and CBSSO is going to know that this is a user that has never logged into the system before. If we do find a user, then we can go ahead and populate them and return them, and then CBSSO will know, hey, this user has actually logged in and approved the system before. We're clear to just let them go through. Um, so that's our first function that we want to implement. The next one is create from SSO. Uh, this function is called only in the event that a user logs in for the first time. So when a user comes in and they follow the authentication workflow, uh, your system has never seen them before, it's going to call this function. Um, again, you're given the authorization event, and you can use that to populate your user. So like I said here, I'm just going to put this into uh, an in-memory array, but you could um, insert this into the database or do whatever registration you need to uh, to make that a user user in your system. Now that we've got our user in the system, again, we're going to populate them and return them. Um, and they'll be available for us to use um, just like they were a real logged in user. The final function um, is update from SSO. I don't have this implemented here. It works exactly like create from SSO, except this is the function that gets called in the event that the user already exists in your system. Um, so if they went back to their uh, like Microsoft profile and they updated some information that's relevant to your system, this is where you would get a chance to be able to um, access both your local data and uh, Microsoft's data for that user and uh, rectify any differences or anything like that. All right, so now that we've got our user service configured, we're able to uh, log in users from our identity provider. The uh, next thing that we need to do is provide some sort of way for our users to actually see the options to uh, log in whenever they visit your application. Usually this involves some sort of like, you know, you can imagine a login screen. There will be uh, some icons, uh, you know, one for Google, one for Facebook, whatever. Um, and it'll say log in via these services. Um, we don't provide the icons for you, but we do provide uh, some helpful shortcuts to help you render out those things. So uh, here in this login.cfm, this is going to represent our login screen. And um, while, excuse me, while we don't have any uh, form field set up, I'm just going to go ahead and render the provider URLs directly. So <clears throat> we're accessing the provider service at CBSSO model. Once we've injected that, then we're able to call get renderable provider data. And this automatically creates links for each of the providers that we have configured in our system. Since I showed you earlier that in our cold box config, we have five different providers configured, um, we're going to end up with five different URLs that allow us to log in through each of those um, uh, different systems. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here is our uh, CBSSO test app. Um, and here is the homepage for the application. You can see that currently I'm not logged in. 
and we have no users in our stuff. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to go to the login screen. Um, and this is what we were looking at in the code a moment ago. You can see that there's five links, each one to a different identity provider that was configured in the cold box CFC. Um, and uh, this is a really, this is where it gets really good. Normally you would have to create all of the different redirect um, URLs in your application. And you'd have to uh, make sure that everything was just right, keeping track of all of the different values, handing them off to the third party system. Uh, but with CBSSO, you don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is render the URL. And then when the user clicks it, um, it's going to go through your functions automatically. So for us, let's go ahead and click on login via intro. Like I said, I've already pre-configured this with Microsoft. Um, and I've actually already logged in through their service and authorized the app. So this is going to go pretty quick. In a real scenario, if you were logging into the app for the first time, you would see Microsoft's page show up for the user and ask them to approve your app. Uh, but since I've already done that, it's just going to do that automatically for us. So when I click here, we log in via Entra. And even though it looked like it happened in the blink of an eye, there was actually three or four different redirects to their system and back to ours. Um, but now we're fully logged in. You can see now we've got user data. So this represents our user session um, uh, based off of the Microsoft account that I have. Um, and then you can see that we've pop populated our, uh, you know, essentially our user database that I have in, in memory. Um, and it was just that easy. All of the code that makes this work was just the code that I showed you a few minutes ago. Now, if we were to go to the login screen again, and let's say that we wanted to click on, say, custom provider. We can go through that one. And that's using a totally different protocol, uh, but everything works exactly the same. We're able to get all of our user data, um, and it populates the user in the system, just like um, when we were using Microsoft SAML. Another important thing is that since we're working with multiple different providers, we need to know uh, which system is ultimately responsible for our user's data. Um, so you can see here that I'm storing the provider information. So this user was loaded through Intra. This user was loaded through the custom provider. Um, and that's really it. Now that we've implemented those things, we have full integration with both Microsoft and our custom provider. And we're able to log in and access user data um, just like that without having to do any of the uh, really specific protocol based things. Um, so now that we've gone through the quick, quick demo, we can take a look at the documentation. Um, I've taken the time to write up um, as thorough of documentation as I can, and I cover all of these providers in detail, um, Facebook, GitHub, Google, Microsoft, SAML, as well as our custom implementation with a lot of code examples um, and even CBAuth integration. So I hope that this module will be really helpful to you. Um, and that it'll make integrating with a third party identity provider a little bit less painful. All right. Thank you.